Hey happy homemakers, welcome back to my channel. So recently Marcus graduated to a toddler bed and he's doing great. It's so cute to see him in a big boy bed. Um, so I went to Ikea to get him a comforter and pillow but he really didn't like any of the duvet covers there. So I decided to try to make one myself and it turned out really great so I thought I would bring you guys along on the process. So I happened to have some fabric already at home that I really liked. So I had this navy deer print which I'll use for the top of the comforter and I thought it would be really fun to make it reversible by using this chevron print that kind of coordinated with that. And I also had a gray deer print that I thought I would save later for like a sheet set or something. So today I'm gonna make a pillowcase to go on the new pillow and a duvet cover for this comforter. And Ikea is the place to get these. Um, it was only $15 for this set which I think is an amazing deal. When Marcus wakes up, I'll measure how many yards um, I needed to make this duvet cover. So all of that information will be linked in the description box below. So the first thing I did was just unfold my fabric and lay the comforter over it. And it was the perfect size to be just half inch bigger around the whole perimeter of the comforter, which would give me a half inch seam allowance. But at the foot of the comforter, I needed to leave the opening and be able to put buttons and stuff there. So I added an additional three inches to the bottom. After that, I just pinned it in place so it wouldn't move around when I cut it. And then I'm just going to cut the top half inch above the comforter. And I did this on my bed only because the lighting in my room is a lot better than anywhere else in the house, but I do not recommend you do it on your bed. Do it either on a hard floor or a kitchen table, something like that. And if your fabric is like mine, where all the deer heads are standing up the same way, you want to be mindful of that and make sure that you always have the top side of the fabric. In my case, I needed the deer heads to be standing the right way up. After cutting it, I'm going to unpin the duvet cover. After that, I'm just going to take my coordinating fabric and lay it out and just use that fabric I just cut as a pattern so that I don't have to measure everything out all over again. And my fabric was a little bit crooked on one end, so I just cut it to make sure it was straight. And then I laid the cut piece of fabric right over the top, making sure that all the edges were lined up. You can pin this if you want to, but I just kind of eyeballed it. and then you're just going to want to carefully cut it the same size as the other fabric. After that, I went through all of my notions to decide what kind of buttons I wanted to put on it. You could either put ties or buttons. I thought since Marcus is a boy, it would be a little bit more boyish to put buttons instead of a tie. So I used these three white buttons. They're really big. I thought they were kind of playful and fun. The next thing I'm going to do is iron both pieces of fabric so that they're really nice and straight. Should have probably done this first, but oh well. And then I'm going to work on the opening at the bottom of the duvet cover um, where the buttons and buttonholes will go. And so the first thing I'm going to do is iron everything in place. So for the underside of the duvet cover, the one that's going to have the button holes in it, I'm going to turn down about a half inch seam. And it's really important to do that exact width because we want it to fit over the duvet cover. Um, and then I'm going to iron that flat so it will stay in place. And then I'm going to do another two inch fold over and iron that so that that also stays in place. And once again, I'm going to quickly iron the fabric first and then on this one, which is the top side of the duvet cover, again, making sure that I'm looking at it with the deer heads facing upwards, I'm going to take the bottom of that fabric and do for the opening of the duvet cover there. On this one, I'm going to do a quarter inch fold and iron that down. And then once that is done, I'm going to fold over another quarter inch for the second seam. And like I said, this is really important to get the measurement right so that the top side and bottom side both end up the same length. After that's done, I'm going to do another two inch fold and iron that. And we're going to sew that quarter seam down, but this second one is going to be left open. 
So you do not want to sew the big hem, you want to sew the tiny one. The other one is going to be kind of go over and around the comforter when you tuck it inside the duvet. So I'm going to go ahead and sew those seams. And like I said, on the underneath side, I'm going to sew one seam along the two inch fold, as you can see there. After those are both done, I'm going to decide where I want the buttons. And the buttons are going to go on the inside of the top piece of fabric, where the holes are going to go on the bottom piece of fabric all the way through that two inch hem. So I measured the whole length of my fabric and I decided to start eight inches in on each side and then put one button in the middle. So one at eight inches and another at eight inches and then put another one in the center of the duvet cover. And then I went in and marked those spots for the buttonholes with a pin. After that, it's time to sew the two pieces together. So I'm going to lay them with the right sides facing in so that it looks inside out and making sure that the two hems along the bottom of the fabric are facing inward towards each other. And then I'm going to spread everything all out and pin everything in place. And you're going to sew along the outside of the whole fabric with a half inch inseam, but you're not going to sew along the hems. You're going to completely leave that open. So after pinning it in place, I'm going to start sewing, um, allowing a half inch seam. And as you notice when I'm sewing here, I, the, one of the fabrics was a little bit longer than the other, um, which is fine. You can cut that off and I just left it because it didn't really bother me. But you're going to want to make sure that wherever you're sewing, you're not letting that, um, I don't know what it's called, the part where the fabric is not colored. You're just going to want to make sure that you sew inside of that so it doesn't show when you turn the fabric right side out. And when you begin and end, you want to make sure that you backstitch a couple times so that your seams don't come out. After that, I'm going to switch to the foot for buttons on my sewing machine. And buttonholes are pretty simple on a sewing machine. Just follow the instructions on your sewing machine. And then I just take each pin out and sew a buttonhole that is going to be the largest buttonhole because my buttons are really, really big. And I want to make sure that they will fit through. You put your button foot on, turn it to a button setting, and zigzag stitch. And then you just do, there should be a number corresponding with the zigzag at the top and bottom and then each side should be a two and the other side should be number four. So you go one zigzag at the top, switch it to two and it will go all the way down one side, switch it back to the one or three and zigzag along the bottom and then the four and it will zigzag along the side. So it's pretty simple but I'm sure that there are a lot of better tutorials on YouTube that you could do to figure that out. So I just do one buttonhole for each button and then take a seam ripper and carefully seam rip them open. After that, I'm just going to measure the buttons out by where I sewed those buttonholes. So I just kind of laid the fabric out together and then poked my finger through the buttonhole where I wanted the button to be and then sewed it in place there. And that's pretty much it. It really is simple. And then after that, I just um, turned it inside out and then made sure to pull the corners out so they're nice and clean and neat. You can use a, a pin for this as well, but I just use my fingers. And then I tucked my duvet cover inside, pulling it to the very corners. And since this is such a small comforter, I didn't see the need to make it any sort of ties in there. And it does stay in place just fine, so I don't think that you need to do that either. 
And then as you see that area where we didn't sew the fold, that's just going to kind of fold over the comforter and the buttons come up and over the top of that end and go through the buttonholes that I just made. And it turned out perfect and I'm really, really happy with it. I couldn't wait to show Marcus. And I just buttoned those together and it was all done. To make the pillowcase was actually really simple. All I did was take the same fabric as the comforter and fold it so it would be the right size to go around both sides of the pillowcase. And I didn't cut that top fold at all, I just left it like that. And then I left a half inch seam allowance at the bottom of the pillow, but I added about three inches to make a wide hem on the short end of the pillow. One inch to fold under and then two inches to fold again. But Honestly, I would have added another inch because it is a little bit short once you get all the sewing done. So I would probably add an extra four inches along the length of the pillow. So you measure the length of the pillow and then add four more inches on the long side. I measured it at the top and at the bottom and marked it with some pins just to help me cut it straight. And the same thing along the bottom. I measured it in multiple places and then marked it with a few pins and cut along those pins as a guide. You can see I even decided that I wanted to make sure it was really straight and I added a little, little pin mid cut there. And then I went ahead and just ironed it to make sure everything was nice and flat. Again, you should probably do this before you even start, but I didn't think about it until afterwards. I'm gonna iron it folded in half like it's always gonna be. And then I'm going to iron that hem. I'm gonna fold it down about an inch and then again about two to three inches. Um, to make a nice wide hem for the pillowcase. And iron both of those folds in place because it just makes it a lot easier to sew. And then I'm gonna sew a seam along that hem, back stitching at the beginning and at the ends. The last thing I'm going to do is keep it folded inside out so that the, the right side of the fabric is folded in towards the center and I'm just going to sew along that short end and long end that are raw fabric edges. So not along the fold and not along the hem we just made, but the raw edges of fabric. And I'm going to allow half inch to do the seam. After I'm done sewing, I'm just going to flip my pillowcase inside out and put my pillow in it. And that was it. I don't know why I don't make all my pillowcases because they really are so simple to make. I was so excited to get it all on Marcus's bed and then show him and he was actually really excited to get into the bed the first time too. It was so sweet and I'm really happy that he enjoyed it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I'm planning to do more DIY videos like this because I've always loved doing things like this and if you guys want to see them in a video form, just let me know because I would love to do more like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this and are having a great day and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.